Dispensationalism is a very important doctrine because we believe that verses should be divided to the right group of people and the right time period. Because if you don't believe in dividing verses to the right group of people and right time period, then you're going to combine the verses together to teach one doctrine and then come up with confusion and heresy. So it's very important that you've got to divide the verses because they could be talking about a different doctrines, not the same and one doctrine. Now, one of the common mistakes about dispensationalism is about baptism. When you look at the word baptism in the Bible, they will use Acts 2.38 to teach that you have to get baptized to get saved. Now, the problem with that teaching is that they don't divide. They don't divide. And we're going to start with 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Let me tell you something. If the Bible says the word baptize, does that mean only one baptism? No. But see, that's what non-dispensationalists do, or people who are not familiar with dispensationalism. What they're going to do is that whenever they see the word baptize in the Bible, they think it applies to them. But we're going to prove it right here. When you look at baptism, it can be very different. First of all, how many of you were baptized in the Red Sea? Yeah, none of us were. Now, you might say, what in the world, really? There were people baptized in the Red Sea? Yeah. Moses, when he crossed with the children of Israel. No, that's not true. The Bible says so. Look at 1 Corinthians 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. The Bible says that when Moses and the children of Israel went through the parting of the Red Sea, they were baptized. Verse 2. And were all baptized unto Moses in where? In the cloud and in the sea. So here we see the baptism of Moses. Now obviously, does that apply to you? No, that doesn't apply to us. We don't cross the Red Sea. So thus we already seen proof right here that this baptism is different. Now, Here's the easy thing to understand. How do we know this baptism is not us? How do we know that this baptism does not apply to us? Because, look at the verse. The context of the verse shows it's different from Christians. When you see something that's different from Christians, then you know that's a different baptism. Things that are different are not the same. It's that simple. Let's also look at the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. The famous verse, right, where you have to get baptized for salvation. Look at Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. The Bible says right here, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So notice right here in Acts chapter 2, and verse 38, it shows a baptism to receive the Spirit. But this baptism, how do we know that it does not apply to us? Use the same thing you did with 1 Corinthians 10 too. Look at the context in the verse and see if it's different from the Christians. And you will find out, yes, it is. Look at Acts chapter 2 and verse... 37. Did they read verse 37? Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? These people heard Acts 2.38. Who are these people? Look at Acts 2.36. 36. Therefore let who? All the house of Israel know assuredly. See that? So this is for the house of Israel. But why are they baptized? Because you will notice right here why they were baptized. Verse 36, Let the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. It's a baptism for Israel. For what? recognizing that they crucified their Messiah. That's why, look at the next verse, 37. The very next verse, they heard that they crucified their Messiah. Yes? And verse 37, what, what is their reaction? They, when they heard this, they crucified their Messiah, 
They were pricked in their hearts. So they're asking, what shall we do? See, they crucified their Messiah. Now they got to make up for it. Man, I'm the one that said crucify him. I'm the one that said let Jesus Christ be crucified. So what should I do about that? Then you'll notice verse 38, Peter saying, repent and be baptized. So you'll notice that this is a baptism for Israel for crucifying their Messiah. We're also going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Chapter 12. We'll probably do this last because it's applying to Christians. So keep your hand at 1 Corinthians 12 and go to Matthew, uh, Mark 1. Mark chapter 1. Mark 1. If you don't believe in different baptisms, some of you might say, no, there's no such thing as different baptisms. You're, you're trying to make everything is pretty much the same. No, look at Mark chapter 1. It showed you there are two different baptisms. This verse actually told you there are two different baptisms, that there are different baptisms. Look at Mark chapter 1. Mark 1. Verse 8, verse 8. I indeed have baptized you with what? Water. So there's your water baptism. So we see John the Baptist baptism. But he shall baptize you with what? The Holy Ghost. So automatically, right here, this verse showed you two different baptisms. Mark chapter 1 and verse 8 showed you two baptisms already. There's a baptism by what? Water. And there's a baptism by what? The Holy Spirit. Some people would like to say, you get baptized with the Holy Spirit once you get baptized in water. No, John already told you those two things are different. He says, my baptism, John the Baptist baptism, John the Baptist baptism is not with the Holy Ghost. It's with water. Now look at Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. It will explain to you what excuse me. It will explain to you what John the Baptist baptism is. Look at Matthew chapter 3. And you're going to see Christians applying this verse to themselves. But you got to realize this. He already showed you a difference. Look at Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. It is a very different baptism. Remember, how do we know different baptisms? Because we made it up. No, all you have to do, it's like this one and all the verses. You just look exactly what the verse says and at the context, and obviously we know it doesn't apply to us if it's different from us. So we're going to look at Matthew chapter 3. We're going to look at verse uh, 6. And were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. So notice right here, these people go to the Jordan River and confess their sins uh, to John the Baptist. They're getting baptized from him. But notice where this location is. This location is, look at verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in where? The wilderness of Judea. John the Baptist is preaching this message from verses 1 all the way down to verse 6. To who? The nation of Israel. Not only that is he preaching to the nation of Israel, he is also baptizing them. Why? Think about this. Why is he baptizing them? Here we saw because Israel crucified their Messiah. Here, it's because of preparation for accepting the Messiah. Remember, the nation of Israel received a promise for thousands of years, or hundreds of years, that the Messiah would be coming, right? So they heard that. So now that Israel finally had the fulfillment of the promise, John the Baptist was telling them, now that the Messiah is coming, you got to get baptized. Because look at the verse. The verse says that. The verse says, verse 3, For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare, see that? Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Verse 5, then went out to him who? Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region 
round about Jordan. See that? So this is talking about the nation of Israel preparing for the Messiah. This baptism is not the same as Christians. If you insist it's the same as Christians, you forgot the verse. John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water. The other one's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. So our baptism is different from John the Baptist. Not only that, we're also going to look, keep reading Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. The verse says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But, so it's repeating Mark 1.8. He's differentiating his baptism from Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ's baptism is what? But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoe I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with what? The Holy Ghost and with fire. So he's baptizing them with the Holy Spirit, different, but, oh, another baptism, another different baptism from Matthew chapter 3. Baptism of fire. Now, you know what's interesting is that a lot of churches, they're going to combine the Holy Spirit and fire together. They think this is the same baptism, just like they thought the same baptism by water. No, you can't do that. You can't do that. You might say, but it says Holy Ghost and fire. Yeah, because Jesus Christ, he gives a baptism of the Holy Ghost to saved Christians, and then he gives a baptism by fire to lost souls. You might say, come on, where does it say that? The scriptures. Well, look at that very next verse. What did the le You think that fire is for saved Christians? Really? Look at what this fire is. Verse... 12. Now notice it says fire, right? Colon. It's going to explain to you what this fire is. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with what? Unquenchable fire. Okay, so you'll notice right here that you don't want the baptism of fire. A lot of charismatic churches, Pente Pentecostal churches, etc., they will try to get this baptism of the Holy Ghost and with fire. No, you don't want the fire, man. Trust me, you don't want the fire. That is for lost souls. Amen. You don't want to go to hell, all right? Amen. Lord, give me the baptism of fire. Don't do it, Lord! Don't do it! Amen. Please, if any of you do that in the middle of church service, please do it a hundred miles away from here so that God don't send fire from heaven, all right, and burn us. So you'll notice right here, see these baptisms are different. Why is this for saved Christians? Why did John the Baptist differentiate it? Jesus will one day come and give you a different baptism. This is different from the Holy Ghost baptism, baptism of fire, too. Why? Look at 1 Corinthians 12. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And Jesus came after John the Baptist. Remember, John the Baptist says he's going to baptize you with Holy Ghost. So meaning John the Baptist's baptism was not the same as Jesus. His was different because he couldn't do this baptism that Jesus did. So if you try to get the baptism of John the Baptist, you got to realize this, you're not going to get the same baptism Jesus gave because John the Baptist said, my baptism is different. Now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have them all made to drink into one spirit. There it is. We, Paul says, he was speaking to the church of Corinth, 1 Corinthians 12. So thus churches receive what? The baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, how do you receive this baptism of the Holy Spirit? Look at Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Some people think that you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit by speaking in tongues. Some of the people believe that you can lose the Spirit and you have to get baptized again. Completely, utterly false. I'll show you how you get the baptism of the Spirit. Look at Ephesians 3. Now, I forgot to mention this at 1 Corinthians 12, 13 that we read. That verse says we're all baptized into what? One body. So in order to receive this baptism of the Holy Ghost, you have to be in the body of Christ. That's how you receive the baptism of the Spirit. Okay, how do you get inside the body of Christ? It's by the Gospel. Look at Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. 
and we will read verse 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same what? Body. So how do you get into the body and partakers of his promise in Christ by what? The gospel. See that? So notice right here you get in the body of Jesus Christ by the gospel. So when you receive the gospel for your salvation, you get in the body of Christ. That body of Christ is operated when the Holy Spirit baptizes you. That's why, ah, that's why it makes sense that Ephesians 1.13, in whom he also trusted after that he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that he believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Oh, that's why that makes sense now, that the Holy Spirit gets in us when we get saved by believing in Jesus Christ. Amen. See, things are clicking now when you teach it in this way. Now, there are approximately seven baptisms in the Bible, but I'm just only, only going to give a few right here. The other baptism that I forgot to mention, this one is very plain. So this shows that baptisms are not the same. There's a baptism of suffering, which pretty much all Christians should be able to agree in, that it's different. John and James went to Jesus, and they said that we want to sit at your right hand or left hand. And Jesus Christ said, can you be baptized with the same baptism I have? And then he explains in that verse, it's his suffering, that cup of suffering. And John and James, they did took that baptism of suffering. It was a lot. 